my first book, The Politics of Aesthetic Judgment, was part of my initial doctoral work, which I began at Stony Brook in 1973 and completed in 1978. Many people wonder why graduate students embark on research in historical context rather than contemporary context. Here the answer is quite simple. The Analysis of historical data provides an opportunity to develop analytic skills, data collection and analysis skills, and technical skills in a context removed from the historical present, and therefore allowing one to be more objective and distant from the subject matter. This is the first of many works in communication and cultural change. The politics of aesthetic judgment examines Impressionist art in the context of the changing worldview and institutional structures for art in fin de siècle France, a civilizing shift. The thesis was developed by drawing on classic and secondary sources to show why their work was revolutionary in its historical context and how Impressionists solved the problem of finding support for their work outside the dominant institution of the salon jury system a system that was overpowered at the end of the 19th century by the newer market system, one dominated by private dealers and critics. Their artistic vision supplanted dominant aesthetic ideals based on eternal fixed forms and fini, the Renaissance illusion of scenographic space with one fixed vanishing point, and classic Greek, Roman, or Christian subject matter. This earlier and traditional vision was replaced by fleeting sketch-like images of transient subject matter in the everyday world. The changes in mentalité and artistic style are empirically connected to new patronage groups for art, especially third-generation European Jews for whom group identity became salient during the Dreyfus Affair and Americans whose social aspirations rested, resisted emulation of an earlier aristocracy. This is the original contribution of the book. The following data were collected for each transaction recorded in the durand account books. durand was the leading dealer of Impressionist art at the end of the 19th century. The patrons of each work, that is the purchaser or seller, uh, were recorded, these data were recorded into one of seven categories. These categories were mutually exclusive, French titled nobility, artist, Jewish, American, a museum, or not known. When the data were analyzed, this, uh, this chart shows the uh, results of the analysis of across all years, 1890 to 1912. Uh, we can see that uh, French non-Jewish were 36 percent, Jewish were 25 percent, Americans were 16 percent. Transactions, this is the result of all transactions, not simply um, the patrons, but all of the paintings that were sold. Now 26 percent are uh, French non-Jewish, 26 percent are Jewish, 36 percent were Americans. By year, you can see that it begins with a high proportion of French patrons, not so many transactions, and it, that decreases up to 1911. For the Americans, the peak is around 1897, 1897, 1898. For uh, French Jews, the peak is around the turn of the century. Uh, for all years, these are transactions of all, all transactions for all years. This chart shows uh, the distribution of purchasers who were involved in more than 15 transactions. So the presumption is that these were probably dealers or very, very large collectors. Now we see that almost 50%, 48% were Americans, 30% Jewish, 19% French. Uh, Salon painting was the exact opposite of uh, the Impressionist paintings. In other words, it was the competing style. What's quite interesting in terms of the comparison is now French non-Jews account for 62% of these patrons. Jews purchased only 3% of the Salon paintings. 
Uh, so the the thesis, the empirical data, make the connection between the newer art form and these rising social uh, stratus, uh, social strata or status groups.